In this video, I'm going to talk about what you need to understand in order to understand product backlog or sprint backlog. These two looks uh, sounds similar, but they are quite different. Um, sprint backlog are usually uh, part of the sprint team um, that comprises of all uh, sprint team members. Uh, product backlog are uh, being owned by the product owner. Product owner is the one who does direct interactions with the customer and it brings in requirements to uh, make enhancements into your applications based on the feedback customer provides. So based on all these informations, product owner brings all of this chunk of requirements and uh, product owner prioritizes them. Product owner uh, also gives more detailed information into the business team uh, that interprets uh, that uh, that requirements into the technical terms. So this this uh, role is being defined by the business analysts. They redefine the requirements and break them into the pieces uh, because product owner brings into the requirement as they may be one full sprint cycle or they may be two full sprint cycle so if you see here in the charts so these are the list of the product owner samples so let's say your customer have the requirements that welcome message is, should be showing in the successful login uh, it doesn't just mean that you will be able to successfully log in because in order to log in you have to go through LDAP credentials and it may hit lots of uh, your your database or it may there may be lots of changes required in order to go through all different roles user roles and and um, they're also uh, required to be complicated with all those uh, error scenarios where invalid users should not show something like that so just showing the banner does not already mean that this can be very short or that can be determined based on what has already been developed in the application so uh, your business analyst is going to go through this and then first thing is what happens is when you get all of these different lists from the product or product owner prioritizes them product owner says i want this uh, item two as a uh, i want that as a priority two maybe they want to prioritize that as a two um, maybe they want to prioritize this one as a one. Maybe they want to have user to be able to download uh, the the account statement with uh, having all uh, nine ten, uh, ten years ten years account statement. They want uh, user to be downloaded, and maybe this one is the priority uh, four. Uh, so based on all these consequences, they don't really need to uh, put everything into the prioritized order. They may just put that into the backlog saying that it is not yet prioritized. For example, um, it doesn't mean that uh, every time product owner brings the requirement prompt to the customers, there may be some backlog items that is out of just simply development. So for example, if you see here, this may this is simply the configuration or changes or technology updates, right? So these things. Uh, probably is required based on your application uh, to where it stands sometimes you might have to go through security patches these are all, all these are the same team member that does all of this these enhancements into your applications so you have to account all of these things okay once these are prioritized and then the business analyst is going to then further enhance this thing okay they are going to go through grooming um, into the sprint where they define uh, describe what is the feature this is looking for okay so when when the business analyst defines this for example this is a priority one and this they get LOE that is uh, basically high level estimate that they want uh, how many sprint that may be they, they may be doing t-shirt sizing uh, which means like a small medium or large just like your t-shirt sizing uh, estimates based on those estimates they also break down if this is going beyond one sprint they'll have to break them down for example this one single thing may require to break down to three pieces 
and then each one is identified by the user story so for example this is the same thing they are breaking it into uh, three pieces three pieces means uh, all three pieces may not be able to deliver in one sprint it may go into another sprint okay so this right now you get the requirement requirement is being interpreted as a business after going through grooming and all the discussion they have the in that grooming they also talk about the complications of uh, while doing that application development which may be what are the complications you might see what are the things you, you might need to handle all these things you discuss within the team scrum team and then um, you finally uh, get the story points you get the story points and based on those story points you get this thing into into the um, the user stories okay the user stories are usually written into uh, into some um, um, uh, scrum uh, agile tool something like jira or rally or alm or or, or tfs uh, visual studio or any things like that so you'll be writing that user story user story is basically the totally new revamping out of waterfall like a formal requirement writing so you are no more writing all documents pages and pages long document which nobody goes even read so with agile you are totally taking that out from the list and you are basically writing um, writing every requirement and make it very short and simple that you can read and you can understand immediately without lapse of any time um, and then you write them into the user story for example if you have number one this one prioritized as a number one which means this is a high priority for the product owner and we have to all work for product owner and whatever product owner say that's when we have to deliver the product and that's what we deliver means we are delivering that into customer okay so what happens next so once you get the user stories all defined and then a user story maybe three maybe four based on complexity okay if this is taking longer than um, like longer than uh, uh, your uh, one week worth of time you might want to break them down okay so basically when you give uh, the story pointing into the user stories um, then you are basically uh, addressing that as a team in a whole uh, we're going to talk more about another uh, videos about how to do the story points estimating um, um, so here let's go with this so you have this user story these are being split into three uh, different different um, different uh, user story so one big epic this is called epic which has uh, like an entire like a high level uh, requirement and then you are defining that into three different um, user story okay so three different user story um, so out of this based on your capacity team is going to pick what they want okay so team said okay let's say we're going to take this uh, in this sprint um, once they have everything groomed and pick, they are ready with the groomed story they pick up okay let's say in this sprint we'll be able to take uh, this all three that means you are pretty much occupied because this is probably your one sprint worth of work for entire team there may be testers involved uh, testing all activities there will be uh, developers uh, developing and there will be uh, you know all of these activities developing testing and all this um, so once you get everything done and in the two weeks there are two consequences one is you might be able to uh, deliver early or you might be able to deliver on time or you might not be able to deliver something maybe it may happen that you might not be able to deliver this you said okay you are going to but there may be some complications that you cannot deliver this at the last time then you are basically having this so these means these are the deliverable products for the customer this is 100 percent tested and delivered so these two are basically go go green okay these are green they are gone so this is not deliverables so what happens is you have scrum usually that goes for two uh two sprint release which means uh it is not yet released to the production 
which means in this sprint you are able to deliver two things this is outside in the one bucket that's now no longer nobody is touching that and then following a sprint you are going to write uh, work on this as a top priority because that is being carried over from first sprint and then you take over for other stories and let's say you are able to deliver everything else in the next sprint so this you deliver this whole piece you deliver here okay this whole piece you deliver and then next thing what you deliver is you probably took from here this one okay let's say you took something from this this is a story and you basically deliver the whole thing so what happens is you uh, sorry not that one but you deliver number two okay because priority two comes next so you deliver something from here okay so what happens is you did this these two things you delivered number one and number two are delivered so what this means is this is right now into your QA server so you'd have to basically deploy that into uh, into the production in order to do the sprint release so basically this is how the product backlog and sprint backlog stands so when you have a uh, to go to the summary now so you have a a product owner who brings the requirement that requirement is gone to the business analyst who will reinterpret them and break them into the small pieces that is deliverable from the scrum team and the scrum team as soon as they pick sprint backlog is the is the list of the user stories that are actually being delivered actually being worked on so it this whole thing are basically the part of the product owner uh, product backlog but then sprint backlog are the ones that you actually picked in order to work okay so unless you pick these are all in the product backlog once you pick this user story you are going to work on those are all part of um, sprint uh, those are all part of the sprint backlog okay so don't get confused what is the sprint backlog so that you really need to understand so sprint backlog is part of the sprint backlogs sorry one more thing here sprint backlog is only for one sprint okay so let's say you did this as a one sprint that's a one sprint backlog and that is done a sprint is completed and following a sprint you did this that's the sprint backlog okay so sprint backlog remains only for each sprint product backlog will remain there until the product is delivered that may be there for two months or that may even be removed okay this is simply the bucket so that's what you need to understand in order to understand product backlog and sprint backlog okay i hope this has been helpful and uh, thank you for watching my video and please continue to subscribe and like my videos thank you